Hey everyone, so I've got another update for my Blender add-on. I kind of conceived of a way to go through this a little more quickly because as the functionality of the add-on is growing, um, it turns out there's a lot of permutations of what you can do with collisions and meshes and shapes and all that good stuff. Um, so what I have here is basically a bunch of different options that are kind of laid out in a grid and I'm gonna try to color code them. So basically everything you see that's here in red is all gonna be um, static bodies, okay? So we have a cylinder collision at the back here, a cube collision. On this cube collision, I'm using a new feature called name override. So you'll see this new box here called name. And then we have Suzanne, it's gonna be the tri-mesh collision and then a simple collision. And then this front row here, I'm gonna talk, uh, talk about at the end. Um, those are a little different and there's still some things to be worked out with these. These are what I call body only uh, collisions, which aren't really collisions at all because they don't have a collision shape. Um, but moving along, we've got red is static body. Green is gonna be all your rigid bodies. Blue is gonna be your area uh, 3Ds, which are new. Um, and I'm gonna go over this in a second. Uh, yellow is gonna be collision only, so these actually don't have bodies, and I'll show you some limitations with these and what you can do with them. And finally, the ones on the end have the discard mesh feature. So these are, you know, they'll have the body and the shape selected, but the mesh will not be attached. And throughout this grid, I've got some other random settings, so uh, we can go through those as well. Um, for the actual add-on, I've cleaned this up a lot. I hope this makes a lot more sense now. Basically, all you do is you select a collision first. So I support box, cylinder, tri-mesh, and simple collisions. And then you select the body after. So static body, rigid body, area 3D, or none. Um, the none settings come into play when you want to have a body, maybe a body with no collision shape, or the other way around. Do I just want to generate a collision shape and not create a body? And then this new setting here is discard mesh, which will actually remove the mesh instance from that hierarchy. There was a lot of refactoring put in place to make this possible. Um, I basically, last week, I rewrote most of the add-on. It still has a lot of backwards compatibility. The flags that are in the custom properties down here are the same, um, but it's improved a lot. So uh, let's go ahead and get this exported into Godot, and then I can talk through uh, the other side. So I already have this set here, but all you do basically is you set your export path. So for me, that's this test.gltf. Once that's set, you literally just hit export, come to your game engine. I'm gonna hit the re-import button. Sometimes Godot does not pick up the fact that the file changed, um, so you might need to re-import. And one more step I forgot to do, I'm gonna do it right now, is we need to have the path set. So once you have the add-on installed, and maybe I'll talk about that briefly, um, in the last video I actually put the Godot side of things on, into the asset store. So if you type in Blender into the asset lib, you'll see the Blender Godot pipeline right here. Uh, I'm not really sure why the links are broken right now, I think I might be having a connection issue. But anyways, once the add-on is downloaded, you'll see that you have these scripts here on the left. And what you need to do is you need to attach the GLTF importer script to your file. So in my case, I have this test.gltf. I'm going to select uh, add-ons, Blender Godot pipeline, and then the GLTF importer. So then I re-import it. Okay, with that done, all we do is drag into the scene and then hit make local. Okay, so we see all of these things have come in here. Let's try to walk through them and see what is happening here. So first, let's look at this cube here. This was set as a static body. We have the mesh instance, we have the collision shape. And you'll notice that the add-on actually reorders this operation. If you try to create a static body using this menu in Godot, um, and I'm actually, I'll am i show you that, we'll do this quickly. So let's say I make a, a copy of this cube and I try to make a try my static body. You'll notice that the cube is at the parent and then the static body and the collision shape are parented to it. Um, this actually causes a lot of problems if you're trying to maintain a consistent structure because basically all other collision shapes in Godot require the body to be the most parent element and then the, um, the shape and the mesh are usually parented to the body so that when the body moves or if anything happen to, happens to it, uh, they move with it. So this is a small thing that the add-on corrects. If you look at this one right here, you'll notice that the static body 3D underscore cube takes precedence, right? Um, so that is the the first and foremost thing that's happening here. So let's delete that. Um, we'll go down the line here. We see this 
green cube is set up as a rigid body cube here and we have the mesh as well as the collision shape. It's really nice because what you can do is you can hide the mesh and you can see the collision shape. So you can do that on any of the collisions that are created with this add-on. Like I said, when they're in that other parent structure, when the mesh is the most parent, you can't actually hide the mesh without seeing, uh, sorry, you can't actually hide the mesh and see the collision at the same time. If you hide the mesh, you lose everything. So this third one here was an area 3D. So um, we see this area 3D here. That's a new feature and it's something I'm using a lot in a game I'm developing right now. And then finally, we have the last couple options were just these two collision shapes. The only difference in Blender for these two was the fact that this one had display wireframe on, so that's why it's, it's wireframe here. Um, and this one is collision shape only. They did have one more setting, which I'm gonna talk through, doesn't quite make sense, so let's tweak something here. This one had the dash D flag, which means it had discard mesh, which doesn't really do anything, right? Um, if it's collision only, it's not creating a mesh anyways. So let's do something like, let's apply the discard mesh to um, the static body because this is something that would be very difficult to do normally because you have to reparent. One more thing I forgot to mention here is that I do have this name override feature. So I do want to explain that quickly. Um, if I just set this name override to test on this mesh here, we're going to have discard and a name override. And then let's export this. So I need to delete my node here, drag it back in and then hit make local. Now you can see the mesh for this cube is gone. Um, and let's come down here and we'll also see that the name of the rigid body has been overridden. So that's the purpose of that name override feature. You can override the body name that's associated with the collision. Um, the reason that this is kind of cool is that every, all of these things follow a consistent structure now. So whether it's a static body, rigid body, area 3D, with all of these different collision shapes, it really does not matter. You can apply this flag to remove the mesh and all I have at the end is the rigid body and the collision shape. So that's, that's a really useful feature um, that I've been using quite a lot myself. So moving right along here, the cylinder shapes are the same. I'm not going to go through them in you know a lot of detail, but static body and any body is going to be the most parent. Then you have the mesh and the collision shape parented to it. Same thing here. Um, let's go take a look. This one doesn't have a mesh. But if we click in here, it's because the discard mesh flag was on for that shape. Right, so this one should be an area 3D. This, these two here are collision shapes only, right? So I did that a couple of times. Let's move on to tri mesh and simple. Uh, hopefully, this is a really great explanation of how these collision shapes differ. This tri mesh uh, shape over here on Suzanne is really complicated, right? So this is why you want to avoid this kind of mesh for normal objects. You might use it on a terrain, but you're not going to use it for objects like this. It's just way over complicated for what you would do in the game engine. Um, so same structure, right? Body, then mesh, then shape. And, and like I said, doing it this way is a big advantage because now I can hide the mesh, right? And I can look at this collision shape and see what's going on. So um, that's, that's quite a useful feature. Then we have the rigid body. And then this one, the area 3D looks like the mesh is removed. So let's go take a look at that. This Suzanne here has the dash D flag, which is set by pressing the discard mesh. So that is going to remove the mesh instance when it gets imported. Okay, so you see all the permutations and variations here. Um, and then finally, we have the simple collisions here on the end. So this one is a Suzanne simple collision with the mesh removed. This one is a rigid body. This one's an area 3D. This one looks like another static body. So let's take a look at this. I haven't talked through this too much. It's a feature I'm working on, but it's not quite there yet. If you want to generate a collision shape only for this, um, so let's say we have this Suzanne head here and I wanna do a simple collision and I wanna do, let's do collision simple. And then you set the body to none and hit set collision. Uh, you'll notice we get the name override. I don't want that in this case. It's not actually going to work, okay? So this is a feature I'm still working on. It's in the pipeline, but it's not very easy right now to generate this collision shape. And then, um, you know, I, for that collision only option, basically you want the collision shape by itself and nothing else. So I'm still working on that. So I wanted to show these last two rows here. You're gonna notice these Suzanne heads still have the bodies and the meshes and everything else. So. Um, you cannot generate the collision shapes on their own for these, but I am working on it. What you can do 
is you can still um, take a collision shape like this simple mesh and you can discard the mesh, okay? So this last one here, this one is set to simple. It's supposed to be a collision shape only, but like I said, that part is still in the pipeline. And the last flag is D, which is for discard mesh. So that gets the mesh discarded. The last couple things I wanna talk through are these boxes, which are bodies only, okay? So I'm gonna add a couple more variations here. This first variation, which I'm gonna fix for you right now, you're gonna notice there's no N cube here. So in this case, we wanna set a body only collision, so it's not gonna have that collision there. And I wanna set this to static body. If you set it to static body, and let me clear this, I'm not gonna do that name override test anymore. If you set it to static body, you're gonna get this body only shape down here. If you set this to none, it's actually gonna create a problem, okay? So it's gonna create this flag and this doesn't quite work either. So I wanna point out some of these edge cases that don't function so well, but let's say we wanna make a static body only set collision, you get a body only. And then we have the rigid body and then the area 3D. So let me regenerate this and we'll do the same workflow. We'll delete this out and drop it back in, hit make local. So now we have the body, it's come back. Uh, hopefully this all makes sense, but we'll pan through these. We have a body and a mesh, right? No collision shape. You get warnings here because um, yeah, Godot is expecting there to be a collision shape. Then here, uh, same thing, rigid body with the mesh and area 3D with the mesh. So one more thing I wanna show here, and once again, there's a lot of permutations of these. I'm not gonna do them all, but let's take one more of these cubes and we're gonna have it body only area, but let's also have it as uh, discarding the mesh. So if I set the collision shape to none, body is area and discard mesh is on, we'll set that. Let me export this again. And delete that. What you'll notice here in the 3D viewport is that there is a area 3D but there's nothing associated with it. So you can do this kind of thing too, like if you want to position an area 3D or a static body or a rigid body, but really there's nothing in here. There's no shape, there's no mesh. Uh, it's not going to do much of anything, but that is something you can do if it makes sense for your workflow. I nearly forgot to explain what is probably the most useful feature of this add-on or one of the most useful features, and that's compound collision shapes. So um, I've gotten some feedback, people are using this and uh, it makes a lot of sense. So let's throw one in real quick. Let's say we have a cube. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a kind of compound collision shape. So you can duplicate it, so shift D to duplicate. I'm gonna hide the previous one. And then you kinda of wanna just like separate out the objects based on um, what the collision shapes are gonna be. So I can see right away that this over here is going to be a collision shape. Um, this will be a shape and then the top piece will be a shape. So now we have these three objects. These are gonna be collision shapes. So let me select these three. We come over here, we set the collision to box and the body is gonna be none because we're going to parent it to something else that has a body. I'll set it to display wireframe and the discard mesh uh, doesn't really do anything in this case because they are gonna be collision only and they don't generate a mesh when they do that. So I'll hit set collisions and you see we get the calculation for the box collision on those three. I'm gonna bring the mesh back now and I'll, I'm gonna parent them. Uh, shift select those three. There we go. Then select the object in the viewport, control P, and then there we go. So what you want is you want the mesh to be the parent most object, and then your three collision shapes are um, children to that parent. But all you have to do here is double check your settings. So this is what I always do. I look at the collision shapes. I see the box collisions. That all looks good. Then I look at the parent mesh. I'm going to select none, hit area 3D, then hit set collision. So what you want to see is a body only and the dash A signifies that it's an area 3D. So let's export this again and see if we can get this to work. So that export is done. Like I said, sometimes it doesn't trigger in Godot, but you just come here, you hit re-import and we're going to drop the node in, make local, and we'll take a look at this thing over here. So like I said, this is for the compound collision shapes and what you get is the area 3D here at the topmost level. We have the mesh, right? So I can hide this. 
and then you can see the three composite shapes that make up this collision. So they're super simple shapes. This is probably gonna be the most useful feature for the most people, I would think, because when you're designing your levels and you're creating your game, you wanna be able to do this easily and quickly um, in something like Blender, right? So you can just mash together these shapes and then you get these really nice, um, you know, efficient collisions to go along with your, your meshes. So I know this was kind of rapid fire. Um, I do want to say I'm working on a couple projects now. I wish I had more time to explain all this in detail. Um, the add-on is something I use regularly. I'll just show you like some of the game development I'm doing for some of my other games. And like for the workflow on this level, um, real quick, I'll just mention that I do use the add-on to create, to create a few things. So I'm using the static body for um, the terrain here. And then the water has different shapes associated with it. So I have an area 3D that's used for detecting when the character model dives into the water. And I'm using a really simple collision shape to make that area entered and area exit signal work really well. Um, and it does function really well. So um, I'm using the, the add-on for that kind of thing. And of course the static body for the water because I'm doing a simple thing to, to allow certain players to float. Um, or certain things to float like the players when they swim, but if they're diving they're they're gonna go through that layer So I put that on a different collision layer some things like that I'm not gonna go too far into the details But just to explain that I'm making some of these changes as I go because I'm finding ways to improve the add-on and just make it better and more functional um, So yeah, I hope that helped I'm gonna post this to YouTube and hopefully tomorrow or maybe even tonight I'm gonna get the updates on the blender market and yeah, let me know if you have any feedback. Thanks for watching.